In this video, we will be learning about selecting approximation functions for displacements or displacements functions. So first, we're going to start with some guidelines for selecting a displacement function. A displacement function is a mathematical function to represent the deformed shape of an element between the nodes when loaded. As you've seen so far, when uh, we use the stiffness method, we are solving for nodal displacements. So we know the displacement at the nodes, but how about throughout the element? We need these displacement functions to evaluate the displacement within the element and away from the nodes. It is difficult or even sometimes impossible to obtain a closed form or an exact solution so we assume a solution shape or a distribution of displacement using these displacement functions or approximate functions the approximation functions should be one typically polynomial functions two continuous within the element three provide inter-element continuity for all degrees of freedom so within the element, we have a continuous function for all degrees of freedom. And four, it should allow for rigid body displacement and for a state of constant strain within the element. We are going to apply these guidelines to derive a displacement function for the bar element that we just developed the stiffness matrix and stiffness equation for bar element or a truss element. So as you can see here, we are looking at this bar element that has a start node one and an end node two and extends along the X axis and has a length L. Now uh, this bar, with the two nodes has two degrees of freedom or two nodal displacements two nodal displacements uh, namely we have here a u1 and we have here a u2 so at each node we only have one nodal displacement when we look at a displacement function to describe the displacements between node 1 and node 2. So we know the displacement at 1, we know the displacement at 2, but we are in need of a shape function or an approximate function to give us the displacement throughout the element. The polynomial that we're going to use here would be a linear function between the nodes along the x axis so this uh, linear function is going to look something like this at node 1 we know that the displacement is u1 and at node 2 the displacement is u2 if i connect these two displacements by a straight line this straight line has a linear relation and u at any distance x along the element or within the element may be described by u equals to a1 plus a2 x i may also write this equation in matrix form as u equals to 1 and x a row matrix multiply by a column matrix a1 and a2 so this is the same as saying a1 plus a2 times x. Now uh, we should be able to solve for these coefficients a1 and a2. And please note that uh, a linear function serves well here because the number of coefficient is the same as the number of degrees of freedom. We have two nodal displacements and we have two unknown coefficients a1 and a2. So using boundary, uh, boundary conditions, we should be able to solve for these coefficients. So I can uh, say here that 
the total number of coefficients is equal to the total number of degrees of freedom. And for this element, this is 2. Now, uh, in order to evaluate these coefficients, we are going to use the boundary conditions. So I can come here and say at x equals to 0. This is at node 1. So at x equal 0, we have u equals to u1. If I use my equation and uh, substitute for x equals 0, I can conclude that u1 must be equal to a1 or a1 equal to u1. So here I solve for the first coefficient. Next, at x equals to l, u is equal to u2. Therefore, u2 is equal to u1 because a1 is equal to u1 plus a2 oops, multiplied by l. So we can uh, solve for uh, a2 and uh, a2 would then be equal to u2 minus u1 over l. So now uh, having solved for the two coefficients, we can uh, write that u is equal to u1 plus u2 minus u1 over l multiplied by x. Which is uh, maybe expressed as u1 plus u2 over L times X minus U1 over L times X. I can uh, write this as equal to 1 minus X over L times U1 plus X over L times U2. In uh, matrix form, I can write it as u equals to 1 minus x over l and x over l multiplied by u1 and u2. And uh, I want to note here that the expression multiplied by u1 may be called n1 and the expression multiplied by u2 may be referred to as n2 times u1 u2 where n1 is equal to 1 minus x over l and n2 is equal to x over L. N1 and N2 are shape functions corresponding to the degrees of freedom or the nodal displacements U1 and U2. So just to remind you, we're able to express U as equal to N1 and N2 multiplied by u1 and u2. If I plot n1 along the x-axis 
you notice that n1 was 1 minus x over l. 1 minus x over l. So here I'm looking at n1. And uh, n1, if you substitute x equals 0, would have a value of 1 at x equals 0 or corresponding to node 1. It's called n1 corresponding to degree of freedom 1. So we'd have a value of unity at x equals 0 or at node 1 and would have a value of 0 at node 2. If I plot n2, which is equal to x over l, you will notice that n2 is equal to 0 at node 1 and equal to unity at node 2. At node 2. From this, we may conclude that the shape functions Ni's are shape functions and Ni's for any degree of freedom express the shape of assumed displacement function over the domain with the ith element degree of freedom having a unit value and all other degrees of freedom are zero. We can also show that n1 plus n2 at any given x along the element is equal to 1. So if you look at x equals 0, we have 1 plus 0 is 1. At x equal L, I have a 0 plus 1, which is 1. If you go anywhere at the same x and you add this n1 to this n2, the summation is going to be equal to 1. So n1 plus n2 is equal to 1 for any x value along the bar element. The u function provides continuity along common boundaries. What does that mean? Should you have another element, another element adjacent to this bar element, let's say connects to this bar element, another element here that would extend from two to three. If I have this shape function here, u, Let's say this is element 1 and this is element 2. I can refer to this as u1. I'm going to have here my second element that goes from 2 to 3. I would have a u2. And this u2 could be another linear function. So if I call this u2 here, this u2 is going to have the same value as u1 at node 2 because there is a continuity. u allows for rigid body displacement and state 
of constant strain. This would be epsilon x in this case. Okay. As we move forward into chapters 4 and other chapters, we're going to be uh, deriving or uh, writing these displacement functions and shape functions for other types of elements.